Welcome to the Hollywood Raw YouTube page, guys. We're happy to have you here. Make sure you like, subscribe, leave us comments, do all the stuff. What are you waiting for? Let's go. I got a drug addiction to feed. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Hollywood Raw Podcast. My name is Adam Glenn. Over there is Dax Holt. We are two out of two of the people of the Hollywood Raw Podcast. <laughs> Our powers combined equals Hollywood Raw. Yeah, where we like to say we humanize Hollywood. Um, our podcast, we like to interview celebrities. But we also like to interview the publicists. We like, to like to, we like to interview the people who made the celebrities famous. I also love speaking to authors. Authors you to me are authors. a hidden gem. They're just so intelligent people. They're not a reality star. Like there's just there's just something very wholesome to talking to an author. And today's guest, I mean, he's written a ton of books, and he wrote a book about the Chateau Marmont that I became obsessed with. Sean Levy's our guest today. Um, his book on Chateau Marmont is is so well. If you're if you're obsessed with Hollywood, old Hollywood to new Hollywood, you'll love this book because it's so well researched. And he knew everyone from the Maitre D to, I mean, literally every single story in death that happened at the Chateau Marmont, he knew and talks about in this book. And, and there's just so much history there. It's one of those places that, like, if you've been listening to our podcast for a long time, you have definitely heard us bring up Chateau Marmont. There's so many big events and uh, so many celebs that go in and out and spottings and all this kind of stuff that... Um, it, 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 like I said, if you've listened to us, you know about it. And if you just are into pop culture, you know about Chateau Marmont because it is such like an infamous location in Hollywood. And I'll tell you when I, when we get Sean on here, I'll tell you why I'm kind of more obsessed with Chateau than the average human being. Um, but I'll, I'll wait to, to fill him in. So I'm not repeating my stories here, but um, just a, a really cool topic. I'm excited to ask him about a lot of the rumors I've heard over the years about famous people, whether it's affairs or drug stories or just random crap that there's been rumors about. I know that he has dove deep into the history of Chateau, so maybe he can clear up some of those rumors for us. Yeah, to me, I've actually never – I'm going to be in L.A. next week, and I've never – taken a step into the Chateau Marmont. You For sure some reason, is. if you've been in LA, it just seems like very mysterious. But the way you pull into the driveway there, that even gave me anxiety. It's weird, right? It's it's not like a the entrance is totally bizarre. Like it's not like this big grand entrance like you get at most hotels. Like I think most people would honestly drive around looking for the entrance because they have no idea how to get into the place. You look like you're going in like a, a I don't know, parking structure or a back entrance, like a service entrance. And that's actually the front of the hotel. It's very weird. But um, if you know where to go, then you know where to go. And maybe that's why they not a lot of people go unless they're celebs and stuff. There. So Dax, if you were going to LA and you had to stay yeah. a night in LA and you could stay at any hotel, would you pick the Chateau Marmont? Would you stay at the Beverly Hills Hilton? Where would you Ooh. want to stay? So I think, I think the Beverly Hills Hotel would be kind of cool just because there's a lot of history there. The big pink uh, you know, hotel, that land. one I think is cool. Chateau though, I think would be on the top of my list. Like it is cool. I've never stayed there. I've been through there. I've been to the bar, but I've never stayed in one of those rooms. So I think it would be on one of my top lists of places to stay. But between that and the Beverly Hills hotel, those two. I ask a lot of people, photographers, drivers in the city, like, cause they, you know, us guys, we're in the city all day. We're we're going by these hotels all day and which hotel you'd stay at least in New York city for us in New York city. I think like the Ritz Carlton's Ritz Carlton. Um, mm -hmm. However, uh, and it overlooks central park, but when you come out of the Ritz Carlton, it's like chaos. It's like right on the middle of central park South. There's just so much going on. If you stay at Trump international, it's a little bit more calmer at the entrance and you have a view of central park. Like you could be on top of the trees and have like that cool view of central park. Yeah. But nobody stays at Trump International anymore as far as celebrities goes because nobody wants to be seen leaving the Trump International Hotel because then they're seen as a Trump supporter. Which is weird because that used to be the hotel to stay at. The spot. It was the best. I've interviewed so many people there from Aerosmith, Mike Tyson, 
Um, and now Jim Carrey, nobody, you told the story from. Yeah. I mean, everyone stayed there. And they have one of the best restaurants in the city, John George. But now nobody stays there because they don't want to be affiliated with Trump. Even though it's like not even Trump owns a hotel. It's like a licensing thing for his name. I don't understand how that works. But nobody wants well, to Well, at this point, paid. if they're just licensing his name, I'm surprised they wouldn't rebrand, honestly. Like <sighs> They did that downtown. So there used to be the Trump Soho, which is a great hotel. And a lot of celebrities stayed there. But they were Trump somehow – something happened with his name. And I don't know the, all this – the details regarding that. But when Trump started to first run, the door guys would tell me like people would come by and scream at them because they were for Trump. And they're like, dude, we're just work here. We're just a job for us. We don't Yeah, know, This is a care. property. This is like, what are you talking about, bro? Yeah. Um, but for me in New York, it would probably be either, honestly, the Trump International. I don't know. There's so many good hotels in New York, even though like, I mean, there's some really, there's a lot of great hotels, but there, it depends what you want to go for. Like to me, the Bowery Hotel, a lot of people stay there. A lot of rock stars stay there. And, but that's our Chateau Marmont. It's dark. It's when you go there at night, you almost need like a flashlight because it's so dark. It almost seems like medieval in a way. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. All right. Uh, let's, uh, let me... to, uh, yeah, yeah. Before we get to him, let's, uh, before we get to Sean, let's read a review decks. All right. This one, if I can get it to come up. Oh, and then I can get it to go away. Sorry, my bad. Uh, this one comes from Daddy's Girl 54. Five stars. Love you guys. Uh, I love that you don't pay monthly fee to hear your podcast. I did a Patreon at one point, but deleted it because I enjoyed your podcast more. Keep up the great work. Debbie D93. Debbie D93. Thank you. Um, Thank you. I'm <laughs> glad you deleted that paying service so you could listen to us for free. Screw that yeah. Patreon, Debbie. Well, yeah, we work out of pocket for you. Uh, but no, thank, um, <laughs> you know, it's a fun thing about this podcast is honestly we do this because it's it's just a fun community and it's a, you know, you guys are the one to keep us going. It's we have a, a very good loyal audience and we are very much appreciative and it's just, yeah, it's it's fun. It's just a, it's a cool community and that's why we have this private Facebook group off the record where you guys ask us questions, we post with you. It's just really cool. Um, but we to, are going to – we did start up OnlyFans so that we could actually pay our bills <laughs> since podcasting doesn't. So if you guys want to support our OnlyFans pages, uh, you can find Adam at Adam D. Adam and D. Adam D. 93. <laughs> That's my name. Adam D. All right. Let's get on to this. Sean's going to be like, what the fuck am I doing coming on to this podcast? <laughs> Tell us about a guest act today. Uh, today, our guest is Sean Levy. He is the author behind a, a very popular book called Castle on Sunset, uh, which is all about Chateau Marmont, the history, the celebs, people who have died there, people who have had drug overdoses, but not only that, scandals and all kinds of stuff. He dives deep into it. He has done so much research onto why this place is one of the most infamous locations in Hollywood, but you know, how it became to be the Chateau Marmont and uh, what it was like years and years ago. Uh, I'm very excited to talk to him. Sean Levy, welcome to the podcast. Sean Levy, thank you so much for coming on this podcast. I, uh, I'm a fan of your work. I've been listening to the audiobook lately, audiobook lately at the gym because um, you've written books about Paul Newman, Robert De Niro, Jerry Lewis. But what about the Chateau Marmont? made you see like going so detailed and so in depth and make you want to write a book made you want to write a book about it you know I, I i write biographies and i write books that i think of as scenes so i've written about the rat pack and swinging london in the 60s you know that kind of austin powers vibe and i always wanted to do a book about the sunset strip but i could never quite find the moment to write about or the angle to take and inside a proposal on the sunset strip to an editor I had a few sentences on Chateau Marmont, and he said, what about a book about Chateau Marmont? And boom, I had like a whole book in my head. And as soon as I heard that, I knew that I could follow the history of this, this place in West Hollywood would also be the history of so much pop culture and Hollywood history and backstory of Hollywood history. So it's kind of like the biography of a place but that place is at the heart of so much of what we think of as popular culture. So I find the Chateau so fascinating because, little backstory here, but when I worked at TMZ, we were literally across the street. 
So my desk every day would look out over Hyde, which is obviously one of the most famous nightclubs. And, um, and then to the left would be Chateau. And I could see Chateau from, uh, from my desk every single day. And I found it so cool because Chateau Mormont has so much history in Hollywood. I could see when, when it was like a big award show night, you could see all the cars, the security, the celebs, the lights lining up for the after parties. I could walk across the street and get a drink in the bar. So for me, like the idea of Chateau Marmont is really cool. And that's why I was so excited to, to get you on this podcast. Someone who has really dove deep into the history. I mean, obviously everyone knows that uh, one of the most famous deaths that ever happened there was John Belushi's, which we'll get into. But, um, you know, I think there's so many more things to talk about, about this hotel and why it is so famous in pop culture history. So, yeah, actually, Sean, I want to ask you that. What is, you know, I'm from the East Coast, Dax on the West Coast. Every time I'm on Sunset Boulevard, for me, I get excited. There's some sort of energy that comes over for me because coming from, it, I'm just not, to me, I'm like, man, I'm in Hollywood. This is where all the stars go. Dax looks at it as like, man, there's just a lot of traffic. Get me back to Orange County. <laughs> but I, you know, what is the appeal of Chateau Marmont? What was the appeal originally? What is it like today? When it was built in the 1920s, the Sunset Strip was an unpaved road. It sat between the city of Los Angeles and the city of Beverly Hills. And because it was policed by the county and not by either of the city police departments, it was kind of outlaw territory. There were speakeasies during Prohibition. There were illegal casinos. There were brothels. And there were nightclubs. So it's always been connected the chateau has always been connected to that history of, of like something underneath. And that continued throughout its history. You know, in, in the forties and fifties, it was the first hotel on the West side of Los Angeles in Hollywood to be racially integrated. It was a hotel where queer guests could feel comfortable living their lifestyle. Whereas at other hotels, they'd either have to hide in their rooms or, or, you know, avoid the place altogether. And, you know, it was a cheap hotel for a long time. So it was really appealing to kind of bohemian people who were connected to the music business or the film business. The Velvet Underground recorded a, an album in Los Angeles and stayed at Chateau. The band, Bob Dylan, um, all the 60s folkies that lived up in Laurel Canyon. Chateau Marmont is right at the intersection of Sunset and Laurel, just about. So... That was like a party place they could go if they ran into someone they didn't didn't necessarily want to bring home with them. So whatever the era of Hollywood you're looking at, in, right to the present day, there's an underground element that that finds comfort at Chateau Marmont. So interesting. Yeah, no, I love it. it. And the amount of celebs that would hang out there on a regular basis, like people that live in LA would literally get a hotel room, stay there. How many rooms does Chateau have, by the way? This is one of the great secrets of the place. When it was built, it had 43 apartments. It was built as an apartment house. Today, fully expanded, as big as it can get, 63 rooms. There, there are floors at the MGM Grand in, in Las Vegas that have more than 63 rooms. So it's a very intimate place, very boutique. And for a long time, it didn't have a restaurant, a bar, a swimming pool, so you really had privacy. There were no areas for the paparazzi or looky-loos to hang around and get, you know, spy you doing something you didn't want in the papers. You really could treat the place like, um, like a private residence, even though it was a hotel. Interesting. So, but when you go in the hotel, like, pay me a picture, Dax. I've never been there. What's the lobby like? Do the, is there a cool bar? Is it just dark? Because on the East Coast. One of the big celebrity hotels we have in New York is the Bowery Hotel, which mm -hmm. the way I view – I've never been in the Chateau Marmont. The way I picture the Chateau Marmont is like the Bowery Hotel. Last week I saw the band 1975 there. Jason Momoa was staying there. Vanessa Hudgens was staying there. And when you walk in that hotel, there's like a fireplace. It's very dark. It's not like a Ritz Carlton or Four Seasons where it's very elegant. And it's just a very it's, – it's a dark vibe. I don't know if I would want to stay there, but what is the Chateau – Marmont look like on the inside a hundred percent like you're talking like if you've you have you ever been to the Roosevelt in Hollywood no 
It's very like, I want to say like this kind of like gothic theme. It really, ma- the inside matches the outside at Chateau where you've got big archways, big chandeliers, dark carpets. Uh, at, at least the last time I was in there, I don't know, Sean, tell me if I'm wrong here. But the l- last time I was there, that's what it looked like. It had a lot of like big potted plants along the corridors, um, but definitely dark and like, it just feels rich. Like, that's all I can say. It's like a really rich, intimate setting. So, and it's one of those spots where, again, you go in, you're going to see someone famous. There's never been a time that I went to Chateau that I didn't see someone famous, whether sitting out at the bar, outside. Um, I mean, probably my most exciting spotting there was the Olsen twins. Like, you know how much I love them, Adam. And to see them at Chateau was like... Oh, this is so cool just to, to see the Olsen twins there. You know, the the entrance used to be where the restaurant is now. So the patio that has the tables, when I was working as an entertainment journalist in the 80s and 90s and go to the Chateau to interview directors, it was very popular with European and international stars and directors because it feels like a European pension more than like an American hotel. Mm-hmm. Um You entered, you came up the stairs off the street and entered this courtyard under the archways and entered the where now the the kitchen staff comes out with your food. Today, you enter in the driveway, which is up Marmont Lane, just off of Sunset Boulevard. And this driveway is barely big enough to do like a donut on a bicycle. You know, you really have to know how to drive a car. They don't let people park their own cars there anymore. They used to. And you come up a, a big flight of stairs into the lobby. Wait, wait, wait. Lobby... I mean, hold... Sean, where did the, sorry, where did the old entrance used to be? Because I only know the one that you're explaining right now okay. with the white so... steps that you see in a ton of paparazzi photos. Right. So imagine you're in the, you come up the stairs and you're fa- you, you've you got the desk in front of you. And then there's the big sort of like living room area, not the bar, but sort of like yeah. the, the lobby sitting room. And then there are windows looking out onto the garden where the tables are. Mm-hmm. The doorway onto that garden used to be the front entrance to the hotel. The address is on Sunset Boulevard. The front door is that door. The, now they make you go in Marmont Lane. So it feels like that's where the address should be. But in fact, it's 8220 Sunset. Okay. Is that where the two, like, random doors are along the fence? Boy, I'm not sure where the doors are on the fence. There was, like, Um, another set of, like, doors that they never have open. I didn't know if that used to be the the front entrance. But you used to – you always had to come up Marmont Lane. The difference was the front door was on the side that was facing south. Now it's the driveway door that faces west. Gotcha. And that was part of you know, the genius of the hotel today. It was bought in the early 1990s by a New York uh, hotelier and investor, Andre Balage, and he remodeled it. And what he did was take it and, and make it look like a golden age, gorgeous hotel that like Humphrey Bogart or Catherine Hepburn might have stayed in. And, you know, what would the most luxurious 40s or 50s hotel look like? And very subtly put that vibe on it. So if you if you're in a ho- if you're in a room, every room has a kitchen because they began as apartments. Mm-hmm. Your toaster looks like a vintage toaster. It's actually like a brand new Cuisinart $200 toaster with an Art Deco, you know, design motif. But it looks like it would have looked as a deluxe hotel 70 years ago. The thing is, 70 years ago it was kind of a dive you know, so it, he 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 created a past that the hotel never really had, but he did it seamlessly. You know, it's a, it's a great work of stagecraft, and you know, people in the film world flock to it. I think because it feels like, oh yeah, this is I'm on a set. I can act like I can act like James Dean now. You know, whereas when James Dean was there, like the you know the shower handle would come off in your hand. <laughs> it's amazing, and then. Uh, there's some. I feel like there's yeah. so many so, infamous stories from Chateau, which we'll get into. I'm sorry. I'm just so excited to talk about this topic. <laughs> Adam, go ahead. Yeah. No. So, but what was from my from the outside looking in? I think the appeal for celebrities was if I'm going to do an interview with a writer, if I'm going to do an interview with the, if I'm a interview from a director like you did with interviews with directors, interviews with writers, it's a cool place to meet because it's very mysterious. It's very dark. 
So it's just very hip. And like you're saying, the bar was very dark. Is Was that the allure? Like when did it change over that celebrities wanted to be there? Was it just because it was probably from paparazzi or what was it? Yeah, it, you know, people in the film business started staying there as early as the 30s. Harry Cohn, who ran Columbia Pictures for decades, used to tell his young actors, if you want to be seen, go to the Beverly Hills. If you don't want to be seen, go to Chateau Marmont. That's mm -hmm. not true today. But even in like the 60s, I found a reference to Chateau Marmont in the Los Angeles Times that the, the local paper felt compelled to tell its readers, Chateau Marmont, comma, a celebrity hotel on the east end of Sunset Boulevard that caters to the showbiz crowd. You know, it was so obscure that people thought it was a school or, or like something to do with Scientology. It's, it's kind of this ornate building. It, it doesn't even sit next to the sign that advertises it. The sign that says Chateau Marmont is not very big and it sits physically away from the main building. So you almost don't connect the two. And I think that was very alluring to people. You were smack in the middle of things, you know, by the time showbiz found Chateau Marmont, Sunset Boulevard had been paved. And as the original owners hoped, it was central to the film world physically, but it was also like this getaway. You could be in it and not in it. That's why people like Paul Newman, Marlon Brando, Gore Vidal, the, the, the sort of 50s rebel people who came and became part of Hollywood, they loved it because they could be in Hollywood, but they weren't of Hollywood, like they hadn't gone Hollywood. And that continued right up until, you know, the Brat Pack era, when people like Keanu Reeves and Johnny Depp and, and um, you know, Judd Nelson and the Breakfast Club people became associated with the hotel. It was like, oh, yeah, I'm a bad boy. I'm staying. I live at Chateau Marmont, you know, and, and you could there, there was no place for someone to jump out with a camera and, and get you. You know, you really yeah. were in a in a private little little um, fortress. Can, can yeah. we talk about some of the most infamous, famous things to have ever happened at Chateau? Because I think. Some of these things have been lost in history, at least with younger people that may be listening to our podcast right now that don't even know how wild and how crazy this place used to be. Like, for instance, you know, Sharon Tate living at Chateau, like literally months before the Manson murders, months before she was killed in one of the most famous, you know, murders of all time. Can, can we talk about some of these things? Sure. You know, Sharon Tate and Roman Polanski lived there before they were married. They flew to London to get married, but then they continued to live at Chateau Marmont. Polanski loved it because it reminded him, as I say, of like a European pension, you know, was self, your room was self-enclosed, you know, you, you'd go down on Sunday morning in your bathrobe to your friend's room and have breakfast on their terrace, that sort of thing. But when Sharon became pregnant, she thought it was um, really awful to bring a baby home to a hotel. Mm -hmm. So they rented the house where she was eventually murdered. Um, ten years before that, the the film director Nicholas Ray. This is how to tell you how how cheap and out of the way Chateau Marmont was. Nicholas Ray lived in a bungalow there for eight years. Oh my God! That's okay, insane. if you live if you live there for eight years today, that would be like an eight digit bill. You know, <laughs> those, those, those bungalows rent for about five grand a night. Well, didn't yeah. Lindsay Lohan rack up like a crazy bill there? Yeah, yeah. She she ran up a bill of about forty five grand in, in in a few weeks. She thought that the movie producers she was working for were going to pay it, and and they did not share that belief. <laughs> um, so weird that, that Lindsay Lohan uh, got some her hands in some debt. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and her one of her assistants leaked the itemized bill um, to I believe TMZ ran that thing. Maybe. <laughs> it was a great document. I printed it out. It was like 40 pages. Um, but Nicholas Ray, when he was living there, created you know the masterpiece Rebel Without a Cause with James Dean and Sal Mineo and Natalie Wood. And he would throw weekly parties for his beatnik bohemian friends, his filmmaking friends, the kids from Hollywood High who were appearing in the movie, and then the actors in the movie. He was simultaneously um, sort of sexually preying on Natalie Wood and Sal Mineo, both of whom were underage. 
He was throwing these parties in the 50s that were really wild, you know, beatnik parties with bongos and jugs of wine and reefers in the bathroom, this sort of thing. And this was going on in plain sight at Chateau, but it had this omerta about it, the secrecy. That story never got out. And that kind of overheated atmosphere led him to make this masterpiece film. Um, In the 70s, the, the, the sort of golden age of, of Laurel Canyon rock and roll bands like you know, the Eagles, the Mamas and the Papas, Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young. Some of those uh, performers kept rooms on, you know, retainer. Basically they could get a room whenever they wanted because it was across the street or down the block from all the clubs, you know, the whiskey, a go-go and the Roxy and all the places, Ciro's where these bands were, were, you know, sort of making their name. And it was sort of like the, 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 the rumpus room of those nightclubs. And it was being used by people all the time. And, you know, they would move up the hill and move in together. And when the relationship ended, they would take a room at Chateau Marmont. It was just sort of an extension of the lifestyle. And I remember you you talked about Led Zeppelin getting, what, like banned from the building or something because of all of their partying that they were doing constantly at the hotel? No, no, no. The Led Zeppelin, it's one of those myths, you know, because Chateau is so tiny, a lot of stuff attaches to it that doesn't quite t- stand the test of, of proper journalistic research. Ah. So the, the rumor was that Led Zeppelin got thrown out of Ch- Chateau Marmont because John Bonham rode a motorcycle through through the halls. You, you physically can't do that. But <laughs> the hall he was alleged to have brought a motorcycle in was about three motorcycles in length. Um, they did stay there. There are great photos. If you Google Led Zeppelin Chateau Marmont, on their very first U.S. tour, they stayed there. And they, they were so tame that they cooked their own Christmas dinner in the Chateau kitchen. There wasn't a restaurant at the time. Oh, before. don't tell me that. We can't ruin Led Zeppelin's <laughs> reputation by saying they're at home cooking. Yeah, yeah. All the stories about them are true. They just happened down the block at the riot house, <laughs> which is now the standard. Um so, you know, they they didn't stay at the Chateau further because on their second tour it was just after the Manson murders. And Chateau at that time was not fenced in and their management felt, you know, this is things are too ugly out there right now. We can't guarantee your security. We're going to put you somewhere else. Hmm. So would you say the first thing that kind of made this place sort of infamous would be the John Belushi death? Oh, yes, absolutely. Um, March of 82, John Belushi ODs in, in one of the bungalows, and Chateau Marmont suddenly is known everywhere. Um, and it be, you can't read about Chateau Marmont in, in any newspaper for 20 years without saying Chateau Marmont, the infamous Hollywood hotel where John Belushi died. Um, the ghoul tours that would go around and look at, you know, pl- famous places, you know, where Lana Turner killed Johnny Stampanato and things like this would stop at Chateau Marmont. And then you had people who were drawn to the room yeah. because they wanted to be in Belushi's bungalow. Uh, Jean-Michel Basquiat, Rick James, both specifically requested to stay in Belushi's bungalow during their visits. So, yeah, that room is now you, anybody could stay in that room, correct? Yeah, it you know there was only sixty three. They couldn't afford to cut the thing loose, and you could stay there within a month of Belushi dying. They just renovated everything. You know there was no trace of him left, other than you know, the the aura. Do you wow. think that Bungalow Three is the most rented room in that hotel? Because there is a lot of weird people that like that kind of stuff, and people are fascinated with ghosts and spirits and all that. Do you think Bungalow Three is number one? It's hard to say, you know, the the way the hotel was built on a hillside in, as I said, like an empty area, um, the upper floors, when it was first built, had views from downtown to Catalina. Um, you, 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 you commanded the, the, the entire view of the LA basin and those are still gorgeous rooms. You know, they're, they're huge, you know, grand piano and parquet marble floors and, you know, six room suite. So there, there, surely those are really popular still. And, and the hotel is also built like in a ziggurat fashion so that there's three or four floors of terraced, apartments or, 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 or hotel rooms. So everyone's got these great um, sort of balconies 
those have got to still be pretty popular. Also, the bungalows, as I say, about five grand a night. So they may be they may be desirable, but you know, in terms, of, I bet there are nights when they're not filled you know, at that price. Dax, so, would you want to stay in John Belushi's room? No, I'm not. I'm not a weirdo that likes staying in death rooms by any means. Um, I would love to stay at Chateau, but uh, I have no desire to sleep in uh, where there could be ghosts or anything like that. Uh, <laughs> but Chateau, I just think is so popular, and you always see like uh, you see photos from a lot of like parties or hangouts, or, or even on Instagram from celebs where there's like this green striped awning. And that's the one where I always know, oh, this was taken at Chateau up on like either the penthouse or, you know, in one of those rooms. It's just so iconic for me. You see the landscape and then the green and white striped awning. And I'm like, oh, there we go. There's someone else staying at Chateau. It, and they may not even tag it. I just know what it is now. You know, one, one of the best ways to experience it just sort of without paying these crazy fees is to watch Sofia Coppola's film somewhere with um, Stephen Dorff and Dakota Fanning, which is shot mainly at Chateau Marmont. There are a couple other locations used, but it's about one of these young Brat Packy type actors living at Chateau Marmont. And it's just the day to day, you know, parking valets and maids and the um, manager of the hotel play themselves. <laughs> Sophia Loren, almost uh, Sophia Loren, Sophia Coppola, uh, you could say almost that she grew up there. Her dad, Francis Coppola, almost bought it in the 70s when it was sorely in need of renovation. And he wanted to turn it into like a living arts colony on the Sunset Strip. But then he got involved in some other stuff. But she used to, you know, she was so well known there that when she was in college at CalArts, she and her friends used to drive down to Chateau Marmont after hours and use the pool. They, you know, she had she had sort of celebrity privilege, you know, Nepo access to 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 the the grounds of the place. Cool. So, and that that film really, there's something of the vibe of the you know the hotel in that film. I've never seen that movie. Sounds super interesting uh, to to just check it out from a different vantage point because yeah, like I haven't. I've seen certain parts of the hotel. I have never gone through it. I've never stayed there, so I've never been out like sitting by the pool or anything. Tell me Betty Davis's experience at the hotel, because I find that story so funny and fascinating. Yeah, Betty Davis was one of these people, even though she was a massive Hollywood star and had a pile of Oscars and that sort of thing. She never really lived in Hollywood. She would rent. And you know, later in her career, when she wasn't making movie star salary, but more TV salary, she would rent at Chateau Marmont. And on two separate occasions, she started fires in her room by accident. <laughs> um, once by putting a bunch of stuff in a storage closet with a bare bulb, and once by falling asleep, smoking a cigarette, watching one of her old movies on TV. And such were the times that like, an actor staying in the next room came and knocked on her door. And, you know, Betty, I think your room's on fire. <laughs> sort of thing. And she said, oh, I'm never staying there again. The place is unlucky. And, and those are, as far as I can tell, the only two fires that the Chateau has ever had. Is by one person, by yeah. one super celeb. Oh, that is so yeah, funny. Yeah, I love that story. I, I like the idea that she was a fire starter. <laughs> I think to me personally, the weirdest, probably the most embarrassing situation that happened at the Chateau Marmont was the Josh Harnett situation. And Dax, you were working at TMZ at the time when Josh yep. Harnett had, you know, and I actually I'm curious for you, Sean, if, if any celebrities or any people say, hey, I want to I stay in that room. But uh, <laughs> uh, Josh, Dax, tell us what happened with Josh Harnett. So Josh had to call 911 because he had such bad diarrhea that he literally thought he was like going to die. So that's not the embarrassing part. The embarrassing part is when TMZ gets their hands on the 911 call where you think you're going to die because you have such bad diarrhea and puts it out there for the world. <laughs> uh, that's the part that I, uh, I have to cringe on his behalf, but uh, it turned into a lot of comedy, com uh, really, wow, I can't talk right now, uh, comedy relief for a lot of people. I'm sure he was horrified by the whole situation. <laughs> um, but it's still to this day, if you take the TMZ Hollywood tour on the, like, the bus, 
they bring it up as you drive past the Chateau Marmont because it was such a funny, iconic story to come out of there. So yeah, speaking personally, I'd rather stay in the Belushi room. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to stay yeah. in the diarrhea trap, the heart net <laughs> diarrhea bomb. Uh, so funny. that, But that story, I to this day, like... If yeah, you, yeah. If you search his name, it is literally one of the top. I mean, actually, I think that actually might have affected that story was so big that might have affected his career. Yeah, because you don't I really mean, hear much know, about Josh Hartnett that much anymore. And yeah, pe people are not going to be so keen to shake your hand for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I think that story I I absolutely love, but I think the other story that I love hearing about, which when we were you know researching to talk about you that I came across I had no idea about was this was the place that Desi Arnaz used to stay when he would get in a fight with his wife Lucille Ball and I thought wow that's a really interesting tidbit to I mean talk about Hollywood royalty yeah yeah Lucy and Desi had a very volatile marriage if you've seen that being with the Ricardos um you, you know that's that's really closely based on on proper research. Um, and he, he was one of those people in the fifties who could afford to keep a room on retainer and he would be there with women, um, outside of his marriage agreements. And he would go there when he was thrown out of the house. And there was a famous story that I repeated with the caveat that there's really no way to prove this story that the two of them one time were tussling over a bag like an attache case of his that was filled with cash. And in their marital quarrel at Chateau Marmont, the suitcase, the, the attache case um, opened up and a gust of wind took the money out onto Sunset Boulevard. You know, that, that film, um, the Aaron Sorkin film about them with Nicole Kidman and Javier Bardem was filming at Chateau Marmont when the employees of the Chateau went on strike. And they stopped shooting at Chateau and started using other locations standing in for Chateau Marmont. Um, they were part of, you know, the, the movement to boycott it, which has since ended. Um, so there was a period of time when even in its great heyday that it's enjoying now, it, it, it's been controversial. It's, it was a place uh, where, where people like Jane Fonda and, um, you know, people who didn't want to cross picket lines were not going there for about a year. Yeah. Um, Sean, by the way, careful with hitting your desk because we it picks up on the mic. Um, let me just make a note of that real fast. Sorry, give me a second. We good, Dex? Uh, hold on, I'm just making a note of that. Okay. Sean, Sorry. Here's, uh, wait, wait, uh, I just want to pick up one thing. Kit, Adam, can you imagine the PAP video that would come out today with Desi and Lucy, them and just cash flying out of the Chateau Marmont, flying down the street? How much money that would go for at this point? Because that would be one of the biggest paparazzi videos of all time. It's insane. That's royalty. That's not even celebrity. That's royalty. It's – uh, they're, they're, they're politicians. I don't – I don't even <laughs> – that's not a that level. Yeah, I mean – they were so big at that time that they bought a movie studio. Jeez. RKO and turned it into Desilu Productions. Yeah. Wow. Sean, what was, you know, I have to imagine there's been, there's a lot of married couples out there that are not happy. What's, do you know if there's any big celebrity affairs going on at the hotel? Like I'm sure people are kind of mingled, but do you know if any, that was the place where they would go and take care of each other? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, because it was used by people who lived elsewhere and would, would rent uh, units at Chateau Marmont during a film production, one of the most famous affairs that went on was um, Sidney Poitier and Diane Carroll, who were both married. Um, this was after the owner um, had, had integrated the hotel, which was not the done thing until about the mid-50s. And it was the place where black entertainers felt most comfortable when they stayed in Hollywood. Miles Davis, Duke Ellington, many actors. And this, these were two of the biggest stars in Hollywood at the time. Sidney Poitier, multiple Oscar nominee and winner. And Diane Carroll, who was you know, a huge film and stage star at the time. They were there simultaneously more than once, for instance. Um, 
Anna Magnani, the great Italian film star of the 40s and 50s, stayed there, and she was acting in a, in a film with um, Tony Franciosa, the method actor, when he was married to Shelley Winters, and he kept coming home to Shelley later and later, and Shelley just got the idea that he was at Chateau Marmont, and she goes right up to Anna Magnani's suite and finds Tony Franciosa there, and they chase him around. Um, she chases them around, rather. Shelley chases Tony and Anna around, and Tony rushes down the stairs, and then Shelley and Anna sit down, and they're just kind of like, why, why are we racing after this guy for? Fuck that guy. <laughs> 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 they, they, like, became friends on the basis of, you know, them sleeping with the same man. Um, so sure. it, it's, always, it's always had that history. I can't speak to who's there now. Again, it's different today because, A, everyone's got a camera in their pocket, and B, it's now as much a paparazzi and, and sort of journalist magnet as it is a celebrity magnet. But back in the day, you know, you you could carry on a lot west. Recently. So so obviously we know it's a breeding ground for affairs, but it it also has a very storied history with drugs and drug use. Besides Belushi, what other big stories have come out of there that are drug related? Oh, well, Rick James, I mentioned staying in Belushi's room. He had to be revived on a couple of visits. Um, you know, people found him in the bathtub, you know, without water in it, sort of turning blue um, and, and managed to keep him alive. Um, you know, people talk about Roman Polanski used to joke that he used to just go down the hallway in Chateau Marmont and sniff underneath each door and he would get stoned by the time he got to his room. <laughs> um, you know, again, it was always... I thought of it once, I thought of it as like a no-tell motel, a naughty place. But as I as I researched it and got to know sort of the vibe of the place, I said, oh, this isn't this isn't a hideaway. It's a refuge. If you were a creative person, a queer person, a person of color, a person who, you know, played bongos at night and wrote a novel or a screenplay or new music, this was a place you could be yourself. The the nearest equivalent to it, I think, is the Chelsea Hotel in Manhattan that has a history of being a place for creative people. And this is Hollywood's version of that. So, yeah, there, were, there was a lot of drug use. Very, very few overdose type situations I was yeah, surprised right. by. And I could only confirm two other deaths. You know, people have died there. But... Um, you know, again, it was so it was so little known that I found a guy, a, a, a popular songwriter in the 50s who took his own life in the hotel and in the news accounts. They gave the address, but they did not say Chateau Marmont. I was like, wait, w- wait a second. That sh- that that hotel at that address is Chateau Marmont. Today, that would be the headline. Chateau Marmont claims another life. Back then, it was like man dies in hotel. Yeah. Do you know yeah. if there was I, any truth to the the rumors of Heath Ledger doing drugs on video at Chateau? There, there is video of him looking like he's, I think, smoking heroin. I believe it was, um, and it looks like a room at Chateau Marmont. You know, again, this mm-hmm. was obviously at such a time where you know the the graininess of the you know the sort of potato quality phone image. And, um, you know, it doesn't have uh, uh, the metadata stamp on it that you could confirm geographically where it was taken. But that was the story. Mm, and, you know, it, it's not out of character for him or for the hotel. Do you gotcha. think the hotel loved this kind of um, attention? Because that kind of built the allure? Yeah, I, th- I think, you know, they, they give lip service to, oh, we don't condone that sort of thing. And then it's like, you know, but you know, we're not going to throw you out if we catch you doing that. And yeah, you know, we're, we're kind of the bad boys. And particularly when you think of like celebrity hotels in Los Angeles and on the west side of Los Angeles, the Beverly Wilshire, the Beverly Hills Hotel, uh, formerly the Bellage, which is now, I think, called the London. So there were, you know, a handful of hotels that would cater to this A-list clientele. And if two or three of them were the sort of place that would scold you, and one of them was like, hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil, that's the one you're going to choose. So they thrived on that for a long time. And, you know, the, the residue of that is still pretty pretty much part of the the, the brand. 
Adam, do yeah. you remember the crazy Britney Spears story that came out of Chateau? Was it something she rubbed? Was it food related? Food, yes. So back in 2007, this was right in the middle of like the super crazy Britney Spears driving around aimlessly, being, you know, having her kind of like psychotic breakdowns in the street, shaving her heads, all of that stuff. There was a story that came out that she was at the Chateau and she began having like some kind of episode and reportedly began to smear food all over her face until she got kicked out of the restaurant. Uh, and I, I remember this story being huge at the time because anything Brittany did at the time was wild. Sean, did you cover any of that? Was that in, in your book? That, that's in the book. The person who complained that her, her dinner was being ruined by this person at the next table um, behaving in this way was Victoria Beckham. Oh, really? That it was yeah. it was Victoria that said Brittany's going crazy over here? Yeah, yeah. Said to the waiter, could you do oh something? Oh my about god, this? that's amazing. And, and Brittany is one of the few people who at least had a temporary ban from the hotel. You wow. really have to have to if you get banned from Chateau Marmont, that's like getting kicked off Skid Row. You know, you really have to <laughs> you really have to, you know carve out new territory in, in bohemianism or, or, or indulgence. It's, 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 uh, it's quite an achievement. Can, so can who else, ahead, I was say, who else is banned from the hotel? Who else is on that list or at least was temporarily um, banned? Lindsay Lowen for, for running up a bill and not paying it. Um, so she never paid that bill. Whatever happened to that bill? It was just, you know, that's, it, it's, it's a bit mysterious. Um, she and her people came to some sort of arrangement with the hotel. She was welcome back. I don't know if she's ever been back for a stay, um, but but there was some sort of agreement reached. You know, in the in the terms of you know, you and I would you know have a heart attack trying to come up with a forty five thousand dollars to pay the hotel bill. For her, it was just like I'll I'll, I'll do a gum commercial in Japan and <laughs> we'll pay the bill. Um, uh, during the '70s, a couple of rock acts, um, and and not the ones you'd expect, not Led Zeppelin, but Bob Dylan apparently had sort of like an open house policy when he was staying there for a while, and Richie Havens, a folk singer, also got banned. And I think these people just sort of, you know, they took the place almost too much like their own, and and you know had people coming in and out. You know, the the Manson people were connected to a rock band that was. The, the name of which escapes me. They recorded one album and it went nowhere. But they lived in a house across the street from Chateau Marmont. And the Manson, Charles Manson and his acolytes spent a lot of time in that house. And this was at a time when the, the walls between the Chateau Marmont and the outside were porous. And they were coming in and out. So there's every chance that, you know, accidentally Sharon Tate and the Manson people had sort of slip by one another in those hallways or, or around the pool before their, their eventual meeting in, in Benedict Canyon. Um, wow. it, it was just, it was that kind of place. So can I go through some of the biggest rumors that were there and you can tell me if they were in fact true or just rumors? Cause okay. like I thought the Led Zeppelin thing was true, but apparently that was rumor. So can I go through a couple other things with you? Sure. What about the rumor that Howard Hughes used to like spy on women at the pool? Oh, absolutely. He he kept one of the the pool was built after World War II. He had permanent uh, residence. He didn't stay there very often in one of the upper penthouses, and he used it basically as, as sort of like a hunting blind to find young women. Interesting. What about? I remember there was a story a long time ago about Jim Morrison. Like, I don't know if he fell off a roof or off like a patio or a, a balcony, but there was some story about Jim Morrison falling off of something there. Absolutely true. He used to do a trick and he did it down the strip originally. And he got thrown out of those hotels where he would grab the awning of, on a terrace and swing to the next terrace. He called it his Tarzan bit. He did it one night, not long before he moved to Paris, which is where he died. He did it one night at Chateau Marmont, and he did slip, but he was only two stories up, and there was sort of like an, a, 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 a rooftop over a doorway, you know, so you stand there and don't get rained on or what have you, and he hit that, so he bounced off that, and he only wound up injuring his leg, and 
Um, that it was reported in the LA Times at the time. You know, some some guy saying, "Yeah, I saw Jim Morrison limping down the street the other day." I was like, "What happened?" <laughs> and he told me the story. So it's like, not only did it really happen, it's like, bam! You can find there's an actual record. Okay, what about? There was a rumor, you know, going back to affairs. I remember there was a famous affair that allegedly happened there with Clark Gable and Gene Harlow, who were two of the most famous people on earth at the time. Yeah, Gene Harlow was about 22 years old. This is true. She was on her third marriage. Her previous husband had killed himself in, in a way that MGM managed to cover up and, and stage so it looked different from... No one really knows what happened with that guy. Um, but her third husband, who was a cinematographer on her films, they took two rooms at Chateau Marmont and there was a doorway between them and they turned them into basically a, like a three bedroom apartment. And he had his side and she had her side. And while they were newlyweds, Clark Gable used to visit Jean Harlow there. And oh my God. The husband was sleeping on a couch. The staff, like they knew that when Gable was there because they had to make a bed in the, in, in the other room, even though it was only sort of the husband and wife staying there. And that marriage only lasted months. Holy um, moly. Well, okay, my last one for you. Very famous rumor that Dennis Hopper used to have a bunch of like hosted orgies at the hotel. I have heard that too, and it's not out of character. He stayed there often um, during the Sunset Strip riots in 1966. Um, he was on the scene, and uh, he couldn't get into his room because, like that, they had a security guard there. And here comes this guy with like a fringe jacket and long hair, and they're like, "No, no, you can't come in here." He's like, he had to wake up the manager and prove that he belonged there. So yeah, it's it's absolutely possible. He also, by the way, was around the Rebel Without a Cause scene yeah. because he play, he's a small player in that film, and he was sleeping with Natalie Wood alongside uh not not physically alongside at the same time that nicholas ray was sleeping with her okay wow okay. jeez oh, yeah, oh no there's... i have one more i have one more way more current what about scarlett johansson and benicio del toro oh. getting it on in the elevator was that true this is a famous story you know what i think happened is they made out in the elevator and the the you know she made a joke about like them screwing in the elevator and then he was like you know if someone's going to tell the story that i screwed charlotte scarlett johansson in an elevator at chateau marmont i am never going to deny this <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no one would you know and uh, so but the, she 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 said i think she said it as a joke and then the joke sort of took on a life of its own and he had a wonderful retort some at some point he said, well, you know, it's only seven stories. And if we got in on the ground floor, I'd have to take off my jacket. By the, by the time I finally got ready, we'd be at, already at my room. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about what this podcast, Glitter and Might, the Lou Wasserman story. What, why you, I don't, I'm not familiar with this story. So educate our audience about your podcast that you do. So yeah, Glitter and Might is the story of the guy who was the most powerful agent and the most powerful studio boss that Hollywood has ever known. He was the guy who invented the summer blockbuster movie, the made-for-TV movie, the studio theme park rides. You know, Disneyland existed, but that wasn't the same as going to a movie studio and being on the, the Jaws ride. Wasserman was behind all of that, but he was also a tremendous political operator. And the idea behind the podcast was someone who had fingers in the White House and all over Hollywood. He was connected to the mafia. His best friend in the world was a guy named Sid Korshak, who was the mob's lawyer in Las Vegas and Los Angeles. He was Ronald Reagan's agent, Wasserman was, for 30 years, and then supported Democrats against Reagan when Reagan ran for governor and president and still was friendly with Reagan. Um, the first, the first uh, formal meal that Reagan took, your know, first be business meeting when he came back from uh, Washington to Bel Air after his presidency was lunch with Lou Wasserman. And when he was inaugurated to the White House, Wasserman was there and Reagan shook his hand on the reception line and said to him, you know, if you were a better agent, I wouldn't have needed this job. <laughs> <laughs> so it's the story of a guy who like, really, I didn't, I, I knew his name 
when I was asked if I was interested in participating in this. And when I dug into the stories, I was like, oh, my God, this guy, he was the biggest agent and ran a movie studio at the same time. Think about that. You're selling yourself the talent. Yeah. The Justice awesome. Department shut him down. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Talk about a monopoly then. Yeah. So um, it's a four-part podcast. It's on all the platforms. It's less than two hours in total. And, you know, we spoke to people who were in the White House with him, people who were on the set of Jaws when he was making phone calls to the set. Um, it, it, it was a really cool project. I'm hoping we do a second season on another someone else in Hollywood who's you know politically and showbiz royalty. I love it, dude. What a what a fascinating topic. Um, I mean, we're running out of time here, but just so interesting to hear all the research that you have done on so many different topics, not just Chateau, but. Uh, on Hollywood in general. And uh, when Adam came to me, he's like, Hey, I, I found this, this author and he's got like really cool stories that, uh, you know, I was like, okay, here we go. And then he started telling me about the things that you've done. And it really, it truly is fascinating to hear how much you have spent time looking into these, you know, these big stories that maybe people either have forgotten or need to know about. So I uh, really appreciate having your knowledge on the podcast. It really just fun stuff. Well, I appreciate the interest. You know, the Chateau book has been lucky since that moment when someone said, what about Chateau Marmont? Um, book soup just down Sunset Boulevard from, from the Chateau. It's been next to the cash register for like four and a half years. And every time I'm in L.A. doing research or visiting family or friends, I just stop by book soup and they're like, hey, Sean. And I just signed the books. And literally, I walked in there one time. I was I was promoting another book, a book I wrote about the um, women pioneers of stand up comedy called In on the Joke. And I was speaking at book soup that night promoting that book. And there was a woman at the cash register buying the castle on sunset. Oh, and that's so cool. she, she was like saying, oh, I, I think I'm going to go eat lunch at this. And the cashier says, well, here's the author right now. And it was like, <laughs> that scene in Annie Hall where they pull Marshall McLuhan to, to, to lecture a guy, you know, the author shows up when you're buying the book. So it's, Adam, been have, a, lucky, it's a lucky book. Adam, have you heard of Book Soup, by the way? Uh, I'm not familiar with Book Soup. Yeah, it's, but... it's like one of the most popular bookstores in, in Hollywood or Los Angeles. It's like where a lot of um, like when a celebrity puts out a book, they'll go and sign at Book Soup. It's just kind of like one of those spots that people want to sign books at or be seen at because okay. if you've got a book in there, it means you've made it. So yeah. that's why it's so cool for him to have his book sitting at the front cash register. That's very cool. In New York, we have The Strand, which is like a very yeah, yeah. place. The, the, um, the thing, Book Soup is like Chateau Marmont in that you go in there, it's usually open late, or at least it was prior to COVID, till 10, 11 o'clock at night. And you'd see, you know, Ethan Hawke, Keanu Reeves, filmmakers, you know, looking at books at night because it was, it was right, it was kitty corner to Spago when Spago was the, the, the celebrity restaurant in town. And you could just tell, uh, the, the, the bookish celebrities are all in Book Soup wait, while their table is, you know, being prepared. So, yeah. Cool. Sean, thank you so much for coming on. Guys, make sure you check out some of his other books. He's got a ton from, like I said, about Jerry Lewis, about uh, the Rat Pack, Paul Newman, Robert De Niro. It's great. Sean, thank you so much. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. We love Hollywood, huh? Dude, I love it. I, I didn't, it's so funny when you first pitched it. Like, I didn't want to tell him, but like I was like, no, no, we don't. And then... <laughs> And then you like kind of talked me into it. And I was like, oh, this is a really cool topic. And then the more I thought about it, the more excited I got about Chateau. Just because, again, I saw it every single day when I went to work. Yeah, we don't really have a place like that in New York. It's so iconic. Like I'm trying to think of New York. We have, I guess, Hotel Chelsea, but uh, the Chelsea Hotel. But it, it's not like the Chateau Marmont. We do have spots in New York, like the Bowery Hotel, which is... What about that hotel that like uh, um, Paris used to live in when she was young? The plaza? Yeah. Yeah, but the plaza, it's different. That's more ritzy. That's more glamorous. The Chateau Marmont's more dark. You know, the only person that really got, you know, the only dark story at the plaza is when Charlie Sheen went crazy and trashed a room. Remember, he had $11,000 uh, sure. worth of damage. Yeah, but yeah. Um, make sure you check out Sean's books. He's a really, I love talking to authors. They're just well 
researched in their topics. And he's obviously a black belt in that. Uh, follow us on all our social media platforms. Facebook, we have a private Facebook group called Off the Record, which I suggest you guys join. Follow me at Adam Glenn, follow Dax Holt at Dax Holt. We'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye. Bye. What's up, guys? If you liked that video, there's plenty more that came from. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell, so we can just feed you all the goodness daily. Hurry up. Come on. Let's go.